Brigham with Drift. In this video, I'm going to tell you about elevated surf craft, specifically the Mega Fish in purple and the Salmon in gray. These are two of their boards aimed more at bigger riders, and I got a bunch of time on them. I'm excited to tell you about them. Uh, if you're new here, check out my specs and my biases below so you know where I'm coming from. If you're subscribed and have been watching, thank you. Thanks for your comments and your questions and your feedback. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, okay, so first thing I would tell you, uh, let's talk a little bit about the brand. So Elevated Surfcraft, and they do make snowboards, surfboards, and skateboards. Uh, their whole thing with the snowboards is to bring that Japanese snow surf ethos uh, to the States. Um, you see this in brands like Gentem Stick and Moss. Uh, they're usually directional boards that emphasize powder and carving on groomers. The, the, the whole idea is like surfing, you take what the mountain's giving you and you interpret it as you go down the mountain and really try to flow with the terrain. Uh, we're not going, you know, against the terrain by building, you know, boxes or jumps or anything like that, but it's just a very uh, natural state with the mountain. Um, and that's what these boards are all about. Um, I, when I first saw Elevated, I really loved like their aesthetic. All the boards look really good. Um, and then across the whole line, they all look really good together. They just got a really nice aesthetic thing going on. But I have to admit the whole, the whole surf thing feels kind of pretentious to me. Um, the, you know, just like we're, you know, we're surfing the mountain and we're flowing and we're at one with the, with nature and with the terrain. I just, that's just not really my jam. Maybe that's because I'm not a surfer and I probably shouldn't talk about it, but I have doubts about how much crossover there really is between surfing and, uh, and snowboarding. But despite that, you know, as someone who's trying to ride all the best powder boards and seeing these shapes, I'm like, I got to try one of those. I ended up getting in touch and uh, ended up on the phone with Aaron, the founder, for about a half hour. He was super cool, um, super nice, helped me get on a couple of boards here. And um, uh, one other cool thing about Elevated is that they do a five-day guarantee and... Um, they're not five consecutive days either. You can take like six months. You can ride these boards five times. And if you don't love them, you can get your money back or swap them for something else. That's pretty awesome. Um, it'd be cool to see. <laughs> it'd be cool to see any brand do that uh, where you could try a board and then swap it out. Because we all know how nice it is to actually ride a board uh, before we buy it. Um, so that's a little bit about Elevated, and uh, the second thing I want to talk to you about is the price. If you look at their boards, you're going to see that they're expensive. Uh, they're both around 900 bucks. Not cheap for any board, and in particular for a brand that presumably doesn't have a big team of engineers, doesn't have their own factory, you know, doesn't have a lot of history or a lot of backing. You compare that to like a Capita Megadeth, which has the most state-of-the-art materials in it, made in their own factory, you know, you're getting into that same price range. Are they worth it? Well, I can't tell anybody, you know, how much they should spend on a board, but I can share a couple things. In defense of the price, uh, these are some of the best-looking boards that I've ever seen, not just in their design, but in the finish, uh, especially the Salmon, which I think has a newer top sheet kind of material and and build it's just it just is really nice it's premium and um the other thing uh that i think you're getting is despite the size and these boards are both very big um they're quite light and and they also have really unique shapes that probably push the boundaries of the factories a little bit i would guess um, on the downside, for that money, I would expect like one of the fastest bases I've ever been on. These bases are fine. I have no complaints, but they didn't impress me. Um, and then another thing, when I got the uh, Mega Fish, it came out of the plastic with a pretty significant blemish. Uh, 
a big scratch right there on the board. Um, and when I got in touch with Elevated, they kind of blamed the shipping, but it was under the plastic and they're just kind of like, yeah, no, that's too bad. Um, probably not a common thing, but for something that costs that much, like I don't think there should be a blemish anywhere on any of the boards ever. Um, I think you're probably mostly paying for the unique shapes and the fact that they're, you know, limited runs um, being produced in relatively small numbers. Uh, you know, they're still out of China. They're they're from GP87, which is an excellent factory, you know, but it might be a little different as well if you were seeing them handmade here in the States. Um, so to be perfectly honest, myself, I would have to say compared to other powder shapes, that I've been on, that it would be hard for me to justify full price for these, um, unless you really wanted to buy into that aesthetic and that ethos, which is cool. Or if you're a bigger rider and you need a POW board that will actually fit you, um, these are a couple of the best options out there. And, and I'm gonna talk more about that in a minute. So third thing I wanted to mention, which I, I've kind of brought it up a few times, is the uniqueness of the shapes. Um, again, all of these boards are focused on float and on turning. And I would say it's not like that there's nobody else doing anything these guys are doing, but if you look at like bigger brands and some of their boards, like if you look at a K2 Special Effects or a Jones Storm Chaser or a Weston Japau, you're going to see boards that have, you know, um, a lot of setback, a big wide nose, a lot of taper, um, you know, maybe some volume shifting so they're a little wider. What you're getting with Elevated is just all of those things are are more extreme. Um, and that's something I really love is testing those extremes. So, you know, the Japau was my top board last year for float in the deepest low angle snow. Well, the Mega Fish is a 170 and it's a centimeter wider than the Japau. And it's even more set back and, and even surfier. And it, it, you know, it floats quite a bit better. I mean, it's just another level. All those things, the taper, the profile, the setback, they're all just taken to an extreme. Um, and I'll talk about how it rides in a minute. Same thing here with the Salmon. This is a volume shifted, shorter pow board like a Jones Storm Chaser or a Special Effects from K2, but it's it's just on another level. This is a 159, which is like a normal size board for most people, and it's 31 centimeters wide. It's by far the widest board I've ever been on. And um, not all their boards are big. They have normal size boards that, that a lot of people really love, but they're all unique in their shape. You can just look at the website and know, you know they're doing something that not everybody else is doing. Um, and to me, that's a lot of fun. Whether or not you like them is another story, but I mean, I love people trying different things. So lastly, number four, how do they ride? I'll start with the Mega Fish. I already mentioned that it floats really, really well. Um, this is, if you're a bigger guy and you want the ultimate in float, um, that's pretty hard to beat. You're not gonna sink that nose. It's got so much setback and so much taper that, you know, it's basically unsinkable. Um, and it's pretty fun to ride on a groomer as well. On the downside, uh, one is that big long nose on the groomer, you get up to speed and it starts to flap pretty good. It's definitely not a bomber. I would say straight up outside of perfect pow, or a perfect groomer, as soon as you're in like chopped up, messy, tracked up snow, it's just plain not fun. Having that much nose out in front of you, it, it just gets kicked around. And then lastly for me, and I jumped all the way in on this riding style, I rode a narrow stance and I rode posy posy, which I actually think is the right call, it's how you should ride these but it's not how I usually like to ride. I usually like to be wider and a little more planted and stable. Um, 
but that just contributes that when the snow's not great, it, they, they just are tough to ride. You don't have that stability. And the biggest issue for me with the mega fish is it's just so set back and you're so heavy on the tail. I just don't love riding off the back foot like that. It's just, it's like a longboard surfboard where all your weight's on the back and it does make that nose like really stick up. But that feeling of just like really swiveling off that back end, uh, it works great. And if you like it, you know, that's that's your baby. Um, but I, I just don't love to ride like that. So it's not a really a criticism of the board. It's more just about stylistic preferences. So awesome, again, in clean, deep pow, fun on a groomer. Uh, probably a board that you're only going to ride a couple of times a season. Um, and when you do, if you can afford to have a board like that for a few runs a season, even in the back country, I don't think I would take it most of the time, but there would be certain days and certain runs where it would be the ultimate. Um, if you can afford that and be able to grab it on those days and for those laps, it would be awesome. As for the salmon, the salmon is a little more, I would say, um, straightforward in its, in its riding style. It's not so tapered and it's not so back heavy. So it doesn't have quite that surfiness. Um, it is a lot wider. And I want to be really clear about this one. I actually loved how this board rode. Um, despite being the widest board I've ever been on, it uh, didn't feel slow edge to edge. I felt like I could bomb pretty hard on it and go pretty fast. It was really fun on a groomer, amazing in soft snow. But I do think I found the limit of width for me. You've heard in past videos, I kind of always say like, you know, I haven't been on a board that's too wide yet. Well, I, I think it finally happened. And I want to be really clear about it. This is um, the only board I've ever ridden where the edges were beyond my toe and my heel. I, you know, I've never experienced that before. And it's not by a whole lot, but it is by a little bit. And again, carving it, I mean, you could just get low and rail a carve, uh, amazing float in the powder. But what I noticed with that edge being, being beyond my feet, um, when the edges, if these are your toes, when the edge is a little bit just near or under your toes, it doesn't take too much effort to put that edge into the snow. Um, but when it's out beyond it, you have to work harder to, to push that edge into the snow. And even though I loved how it rode, I loved the flex and really the feel overall, except it just made my feet hurt to hold it on edge, heel and toe. It was just a lot of extra work, and I think pretty simply, um, you know, a centimeter, maybe even two centimeters narrower, and I'd be stoked. I'd be all over it. So if you're a size 13 to 15 and probably 200 pounds plus, and you want a proper POW board, this is your jam. Uh, I mean, I guess like LibTech might have, you know, something that would work for you the stump ape, but it's, I think, still not this wide. Um, there's just not a lot out there for somebody that big. So this is a volume shifted pow board, but in a huge size for a big person. So, I mean, I would recommend it all day. I could recommend the Mega Fish too. I just think it's, it's even a little less versatile. Um, and even the Salmon is still going to be a board that you're not going to want to ride all the time, but I think you could ride it a little more consistently than, than the mega fish, depending on the conditions. So those are my thoughts about elevated. I'd love to try a couple of other boards specifically. I want to try the egg, which is probably like their most straightforward shape, but it's still pretty long and wide. So I think it might be awesome for me. Um, I'd love to get your thoughts. Uh, what do you think of these boards? Are you interested in them? Do you, want a shape like this, do you think it would be worth it? Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, keep it coming with the questions and everything. And thank you for watching.